Hey guys, it's Riley here at Wandering Willow Farms, and today I'm really excited because I just got my first shipment of plants for the new 2023 growing season. So I have to work on getting these potted up, and it's a nice sunny day today, so I'm super thankful for that. So I'm going to kind of walk you guys through the process of what I do when I get these new plants, and we're going to get them all potted up, so that way they'll be ready to go home with you in just a couple months as finished gallon-sized plants. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so in this order, I have mostly some shrubs and kind of some berry plants. Um, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start off by showing you guys. So this is what these plants look like. So they're just little tiny sticks. These right here are heritage raspberries. So they're a, a really popular raspberry variety. Um, and it looks like they are starting to push out maybe just a little bit of new growth. These did come from over on the coast, so it's probably a bit warmer over there than we are over here in the Treasure Valley. You can see they're just starting out as a nice little plug. So I'm gonna pot these up into gallon sized containers. Since they do have a little bit of new growth on them, I'm probably gonna end up covering them with some plastic just so they can adjust to our weather here without going into shock and ultimately killing them. So I'm gonna fill up some pots and then we'll get these guys planted. So what we have here is this is my soil bucket. I try and mix up all my soil with water before I am potting it because that just kind of helps to retain moisture better and the plants are off to a better start. But this has been sitting outside for a while so you can see it's collected quite a bit of rain water from all the rain we've been having lately. I'm gonna start out by just kind of using what I can over here and then once we get into the kind of the water I'll add another bag in here and mix it up and that should take care of that issue. Um, this is a super simple process. All I do is just take a little bit of soil put it in there at the bottom Then I have my plug and we're going to take that. It looks like I have this a little too high. So I'm just going to make a little divot to put that in and that's about the level I want it. I'm just going to kind of support that up and then fill in the pot with the rest of the soil. looks like there's a couple leaves that fell in here. I don't want those. And then I'm just going to kind of make sure to pack the soil in here so I don't have a bunch of air bubbles. And this little raspberry plant is good to go. I'm gonna get these all potted up and then probably in a month or so, I'll add fertilizer to these pots. Um, they're not gonna be using anything while it's really cold, so I'm not gonna worry about fertilizer today. So I have 30 of these heritage raspberries, so I'm gonna do this 30 times and then we'll move on to the next variety. Okay, so I went ahead and I got all of these plants potted up. So there is 170 plants right here. You can kind of see I made a little makeshift table here because my actual tables are already filled up with plants underneath of them. So I just took these milk jugs and put some two by fours along the top. And then I have a couple support beams to go in the center. And I'll just cover this up with the plastic and that should keep them nice and kind of protected over the winter. So now what I'm gonna to need to do is just water them in and then they'll be ready to be covered up. Okay, so they're all tucked away for winter. I just used a couple of two gallon plants that I had hanging around the nursery and they'll just kind of be my weights for the plastic so it'll not blow away or anything like that. So I think what I'm gonna do now is since these plants are all dormant and there's nothing really to show you guys, I'm gonna um, sit down and just show you kind of some pictures and give you a little bit of information about the varieties that I just planted because there's some that I think are really cool and I'm excited to have here to give to you guys. So uh, let's go ahead and do that. I'm just gonna kinda try and power through these and go through them really quickly and just kinda give you some basic information about each one of these. So I have my invoice in front of me so I can make sure that I don't miss anything. Um, so the first one of these plants is called the Acai Hardy Kiwi. Um, and this is one that I have tried to get for the nursery and it's just been really hard to get a hold of. So I'm really excited to finally have it. It's a vining plant. And it's going to be hardy in zones five through nine. It produces little fruits that look kind of like grapes. I've never tried them myself before, so I can't tell you how they're going to taste. But I'm really excited to have those and to try them. Um, they are supposed to be easy to grow, so 
they'll be a great one for you to try as well. Next is going to be the Autumn Brilliant Service Berry. This is one of my all-time favorite plants. I think everybody should have one of them planted. Um, and this plant is going to be in a zone 4 through 9 and it gets 15 to 25 feet tall and wide, and you can grow them as like a single stem tree or a multi-stem. And they bloom in the springtime, so they have a nice white blooms, and then as you might guess from their name, they do have some nice fall color as well. And then next is Bale Halo Dogwood. That's gonna be the variegated red, red twig dogwood. And this one is a zone three through seven, and it's gonna grow four to six feet tall and wide. And then, of course, they have the bright red stems in the winter time. So if you need some winter interest, this is a great one to add. And it's super easy to grow. They grow in full sun and they can here. They do like to have a little bit of shade in the afternoon, but they can do full sun. Um, and then next, we're going to go into the raspberries. So I got fall gold raspberries, um, which, again, I have never tried these personally, but everybody tells me that they are really good. Um, and they're zone three through eight and they have like the yellow raspberry produced most abundantly kind of in late summer to fall. And then next is the heritage raspberry, which is kind of one of the gold standards for raspberries. Again, zone four through eight for this one. And it gets five to seven feet tall and wide and this one's ever bearing, so it produces all season long. And another interesting one that I have is the black raspberry. The variety name for this one is Jewel and it's gonna be a zone five through eight. I haven't tried this one before, but it's supposed to be a little bit smaller in the three to five feet range. And I'm excited to try this one as well and see how those taste. If you guys have any experience with this variety, let me know what you thought of it. And then we have Triple Crown Blackberry. This is a thornless variety and they produce really nice, big, sweet berries. Um, and it's probably the gold standard for blackberries on today's market. And it's gonna be a zone five through eight and it will get up to five feet tall and wide. And then with all of these, um, like the raspberries and blackberries, just know that they do kind of like to spread. So be aware of that and know that if you start with one plant in a few years, they will um, kind of fill in your bed if you give them some space. Um, the next one is the bridal wreath spirea. And this is kind of an old timey plant that used to be really popular, but for some reason it's just not around much these days. So I'm excited to have some of these. I have some that I grew from cuttings, um, but I just wanted to have some more of them. So they can grow from 5 to 10 feet tall and spread 10 to 20 feet wide. I wouldn't expect them to get that 10 to 20 foot range. They'd be on the smaller end around here probably, and they would take a while to get there as well. But what's nice about these is that they have nice big white blooms in the spring, like classic spirea blooms all the way up and down the stems. Um, but the branches kind of have like an arching habit, so they are really nice for adding some texture. We're going to finish off with three varieties of lilacs. So the first one is primrose, which is called the yellow lilac. The buds are kind of a, a buttery yellow and they have kind of a white flower. So it kind of has a yellowish hue, but it's gonna be pretty white in appearance, especially if you're not up close to the plant. This one is a zone three through seven and gets six to 10 feet tall and wide. And then we have President Grevy, which is kind of a that standard lilac color. And this one is also a zone three through seven and it's gonna get 10 to 12 feet tall and wide. And then lastly, we have a purple glory lilac. So this one is a hybrid lilac and it's gonna get 12 to 15 feet tall and wide and it's a zone three through eight. And it has a nice darker purple color. So um, that kind of wraps up this order of plants and there's gonna be lots more to come, but if any of those are interesting and something that you'd wanna be planting in your own garden, make sure to write that down so you remember and come check it out this spring. And until next time, I'll see you later.